Am I the only one who sees these really differently now that I'm an adult? Hey, it's Phoebe from WatchMojo, and today we're taking a look at facts about Disney movies that are going to ruin your childhood. Now, pussycat, tell me more about myself. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We're taking a look at story elements and behind the scenes facts about animated Disney films that are pretty questionable when you look at them now. And don't even get me started on Pocahontas. Let's take a look. Disney movies are primarily made to be enjoyed by children, but they often clearly have an adult audience in mind as well. While some of these jokes and references may have gone right over your head when you were a kid, as you've gotten older, you've probably noticed some quite suggestive jokes in your favorite childhood movies. They're usually subtle, but once you notice them, you can't unsee them. Just look at Buzz's wings springing to attention in Toy Story 2. Or the scene in which two girls flash their idol in cars, and that foot size joke in Frozen. Me? Foot size? Foot size doesn't matter. There are also persistent rumors that pranksters have worked more explicit sexual messages into Disney animations. In the mid-90s, conservative Christian groups raged against The Lion King over a scene in which a dust cloud appears to form the word sex. What mook made that up? One of the film's animators later claimed it spelt SFX for special effects. Another popular claim is that the eponymous hero in Aladdin whispers good teenagers take off their clothes to Raja. Good teenagers take off, come on, down, down, Kate. While this seems pretty dubious, it turns out that at least some examples of production trickery really did take place. In 1999, a version of The Rescuers, released for home video, was quickly recalled when viewers discovered that when they freeze-framed one scene, they could see an image of a topless woman in an open window. No one knows who inserted this picture, but its infamy lives on in Disney history. Disney bases many of their movies on historical stories and classic fairy tales, but they also take considerable liberties with their source material, omitting disturbing real-life details or darker plot points that forever color the movies when you learn about them later on. Sometimes, the more you learn, the more you wish you could forget. The Hans Christian Andersen tale The Little Mermaid, for example, ends not with a happily ever after, but with the prince marrying someone else and the mermaid sisters telling her to murder him so she can return to the ocean. Oh, she's got it bad. Happily, she doesn't. Unhappily, she lets herself die instead and becomes sea foam. Now that's dark. The real-life story of Pocahontas goes a little differently, too. According to historians, John Smith's claim that Pocahontas saved him from her father should be taken with a grain of salt. He also told a similar tale about a girl in Hungary. There's no evidence that the two had a romantic relationship, which is for the best, since when they met, Pocahontas was 10 or 12. Uh, nah. I like hello better. She did end up marrying a John, a tobacco planter called John Rolfe, with whom she had a child and traveled to England. But she then died of illness at around 21 years old. Sometimes it's the backstory behind the creation of the films that takes away from the magic, as is the case with Winnie the Pooh. Hello, Bob. It turns out that the real-life Christopher Robin, the son of series author A. A. Milne, was resentful of the fantastical stories written about him and had a strained relationship with his father. When I was Billy Moon, we played in the woods and then you wrote that book and it all stopped. As if it had all been a piece of research. Even The Lion King, an original tale, is disturbing when you think about it in a real-life context. Long live the king. Of course, it's only original provided you discount all the similarities to Kimba the White Lion. Either way, it's best not to dwell on the fact that Simba and Nala are most likely half-siblings, since Mufasa seems to be the only male lion in the pride. Alternatively, Nala's father could be Scar, but that would still make them cousins. Oh dear, I've said too much. Fortunately, Disney made Pocahontas older for her on-screen romance with John Smith, but the official ages that Disney provides for their other princesses still raise a lot of questions. Snow White is supposed to be just 14 when she's sent off into the woods to be murdered, making the whole tale feel much darker. <coughs> Ariel is 16 when she ties the knot and shacks up with Prince Eric, and Belle is just a year older when she's locked up and falls in love with her part-man, part-animal captor. It is you! At least since Jasmine is 15, her rebellious attitude makes a lot of sense but it sure makes the scene in which she distracts Jafar pretty uncomfortable. Jafar? 
I never realized how incredibly handsome you are. Hmm, that's better. Disney dads are often important characters, even when their main role is just to marry off their very young daughters. I just want to make sure you're taken care of. Provided for. Disney moms, on the other hand, are frequently nowhere to be found. Do you have daddy issues? I don't even have a mom! Neither do we! In fact, you've probably noticed that a lot of Disney protagonists are either motherless or orphaned, forcing them to forge their own paths in life without much parental intervention. While you may have assumed that this was just a convenient or traditional plot device, Walt Disney's own personal life might have something to do with it too. What's mother? Why, Peter. A mother's someone who, who loves and cares for you and, and tells you stories. In 1938, Walt Disney had already become quite successful and wanted to help his aging parents out by purchasing a house for them. He had some studio employees work on fixing the broken furnace, but it turned out that the problem wasn't correctly resolved. Not long after, Walt's mother, Flora Disney, died from asphyxiation because of the fumes. Some have said that Walt blamed himself for the terrible accident and went on to write more and more characters who didn't have mothers. Now on to another biggie, racism and racist stereotypes. Man Behind the Mouse Walt Disney has both defenders and detractors when it comes to accusations of racism and anti-Semitism. On one hand, he donated to Jewish charities, and some of his Jewish employees have come to his defense. On the other, he was a founding member of an anti-communist organization with a reputation for anti-Semitism and hosted Nazi filmmaker Leni Riefenstahl during promotion of her movie before the outbreak of the Second World War. Whatever you think about the man himself, it's clear that racist stereotypes made their way into some of our most beloved Disney movies. We are Siamese, if you please. We are Siamese, if you don't please. Of course, some historical context is important, as many of these stereotypes were widespread stock characters. Then again, that doesn't exactly make us feel good about them either. Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Fu Yang. <laughs> Fortune cookie, always wrong. <laughs> One of the most glaring examples is the Big Bad Wolf's Jewish peddler disguise in Three Little Pigs. Who's there? I'm the full of brush man. I'm working my way through college. Then there are the Native American stereotypes in Peter Pan. Today, the song, What Makes the Red Man Red, is pretty hard to listen to without cringing. Why does he ask you how? Why does he ask you how? What's the engine didn't know all the things that he knows now? The crows in Dumbo are also commonly cited as racist caricatures. But I be done seen by everything when I see an elephant fly. But the most infamous example is undoubtedly the live-action slash animated musical Song of the South, which has essentially been disavowed by many Disney fans. Who? Me? I might have said something about him day before yesterday. But it done gone clean off my mind. Honestly, we do love our Disney movies. But sometimes, ignorance really is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> You're welcome. And thank you! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.